Welcome back, everyone. Rock and Stone. This is episode 16 of my How to Paint Deep Rock Galactic series. Today is going to be the Mule or Molly. And I did print up one of their loot bugs from the STL files. So don't look for that in your game box. That was just in their 3D printer version they sent out during the Kickstarter. Per the normal, everything will be down below. Uh, breakout of colors, key points, etc. So skip around as needed. And I will catch up with you at the end. Part one will be Molly the Mule. So here's the in-game shot I took of Molly. The main features I wanted to capture when I did this was that particular kind of orange color on the legs and top. That blue light that you see in the legs. There's that little slot at the top. And there's that one large lamp light on the middle of the head. I started out by washing and priming the miniature in black. The headlamp was rolling loose in the game box, so I glued that on after the fact. Thus, it's still white in the shots here. I painted up that big central dome light on the top in white to prepare it for a bright speed paint later on. The mule is a big metal beast of a machine. I grabbed some plate mail, army painter, war paints, and I could have used gunmetal, I suppose. I was going for a little brighter metallic color though in this case. I dry brushed that on to give it as smooth a coat as possible over the lid and the lower body. I'll be using this as an undercoat for some of the speed paints and as a main color for some portions in the middle part of the body.
I spent a fair amount of time off screen trying to find a nice orangish red combination to duplicate those in-game colors. I settled on a mixture of three drops of Fire Giant Orange Army Painter Speed Paint and one drop of the Blood Red Army Painter Speed Paint. I'll focus on thin coats versus lathering it on thick because I don't want it to pull or have staining. You know, this is smooth, kind of a brush metal, I guess you could say, you know, so I want it to be as smooth metallic plate as possible when I did this. So for the main body of the mule, things went a bit sideways on me. The in-game photo is an off-white metallic color. Speed paints are not keen on a white color of any sorts. I tried inks and glazes as well. I finally settled on the idea that I would make the mule look dingy and rusty by glazing over the whole main body. So I took a mix of two parts glaze medium, two parts burnt umber ink, and added just probably a quarter drop of white to that as well to lighten it up. And I slather it all over the model here. This is just, just in that squared off midsection and a little on the top. The goal here was to come back, which I will, with a paper towel and probably wipe off about 99% of all that. Just trying to leave it in some of the grooves, just to kind of tint the model dirty a little bit but not actually paint it that color permanently. You could probably get by with just doing some Agrax or shade and maybe some, you know, black or gnome type oil wash. Um, just so you wouldn't have to hassle and mess with some experiment like this. But this was me playing with stuff, trying to find something and it still worked out in the end. Next, there are thin slots in each of the legs there. That little rectangle that wraps around, that is a light in the in-game photo. So I paint matte white in there and prepare them for the brighter speed paint to come. I hit up the knee joints with Gravelord Gray Speed Paint and use the leftover to grime up those vents at the bottom of each of the side panels there. I decided to hit the underside of the legs and the feet of this color as well.
I also hit the metal light fixture that was the forward facing light with the Gravelord Gray and dirty up the metallic areas on the top as well. I go back with some plate mail army painter war paint and a dry brush to bring back up some of those highlights on the sides. Uh, just that, that glaze I put over it was a little thick still even after wiping it off. So I wanted to bring back out some of those edges and a few spots just to brighten it up a little bit. For the leg and the top dome light, I went with Plasmatic Bolt for a blue tinted light color. It's pretty similar to what the end game is. Since I didn't want to paint the mule all white for the metal areas, I wanted to add some interest at least with the speed paint colors I knew that look good over metallic base coats. For these long bars on the side panel, I went with Sand Golem for a golden color metal. Decided to dip a little uh, dark wood on the brush and just hit two small panels on the top 
and use it to shade up that deep groove on the underside of the leg as well. Just experimenting there. For the rest of the side panels, I went with a hardened leather. It creates kind of a nice dark coppery bronze effect when you go over metallics with it. Side note, the bonus of keeping the main body mostly metallic is once that speed paint dries anywhere you went over the edges, I just went back with a little bit of the plate mail, crisp up those edges around there and just cover the speed paint up if I ran over an edge. So. Let me get a little sloppy there and easy to clean up that way. For the front headlamp, I tried some orange colors, didn't like them. So here I'm painting back over it with white. And then I just settle on a zealot yellow speed paint in the end for the light. Part two is the loot bug, or a golden loot bug in this case. I primed it white and dry brushed the body again with Army Painter Plate Mail off screen. I then used Army Painter Sand Golem, which makes a wonderful gold color over metallics as the main body color. So it went on super smooth, no staining, loved it. And for clarification, don't go rummaging in your game box for this when you get it. My guess is they originally thought they would use a 3D model, but when you read the rules, you know, there's certain situations where you can occupy that same spot when you flip over these little question mark tokens and there are loot bugs under some of those. So I'm guessing they made the model and realized they couldn't use that in game, but they gave it out with the free STLs during the Kickstarter. So no complaints here. It's pretty cool looking. I had fun with this one. I used some Dollar Rowney black ink with a little bit of I think it was gloss medium in this case and that was to put on those little eyes and the stubby little legs. Bug has bluish eye pupils. Stick a game shot up here. And I wanted to try to simulate that. So I painted some matte white in the center of each eyeball and followed that up with a little dab of plasmatic bolt to create that kind of bluish effect. So 
So for the base on this and when I do my final models that came with the game, I'm now leaning heavy on a earthy color dry brushing scheme. The tiles in the game are all very kind of a lightish brown in color, so in my mind I kind of want the basing to match kind of with the board so they fit in. So that's what I went with here, similar to past videos. Vallejo Earth for the initial dry brush. I follow that up with some Army Painter Desert Yellow War Paint with a dab of white in that as well. And then the third highlight is just the matte white. Once I was done with that, tossed a little homebrew Agrax Earthshade over the rock just to give it a little more character. So this was a quick one. Here are a few shots of my two table ready models. I already got the bust out the mule here just yesterday, so it was a big hit dropping the little gems in it. I'll run through a few pictures here and circle back and meet you up in a minute. So I hope those were helpful. Um, you know, Molly, I had a lot of trouble with Molly. I don't know. I got tunnel vision on uh, trying to come up with a white metallic, I guess. So it took me a week of kind of redoing it a couple times to finally throw in the towel and go with what we had there. So it's a big metal dirty bot is what it is. It's Molly. Uh, next one's coming up. I do plan to do one final episode around just all my painted models. I'm printing out some uh, box organizers as well, so I'll share some of that for those with a 3D printer just to kind of see uh, how, how it looks with the trays and things. These are just some various ones I found off the web, so I'll post out links when I get that video up. Um, beyond that, I'm wrapping up the gunner reshoot and then I'm going to do the other three characters as well uh, driller scout and engineer and those will probably be the last painting videos specific to this series so I've enjoyed this ride this has uh, been a great a great game I actually got to play it with my family just this weekend that was a nine-year-old twelve-year-old and two forty-somethings and everyone had a pretty good time so I'd say they did a pretty good job of capturing that spirit and feel of the game. So for those of you still waiting to get your hands on it, um, a little more patience will pay off in the end. It's, it's a good game. So hopefully it's getting to everyone very soon. That's it for now. I'll talk to you later.